Now, I promise this isn't another episode on the fuel system, although I do mention it a few times. In today's episode, we're gonna be tackling the cooling system and we're gonna be tearing the top of the engine off. I'm fairly certain I'm gonna be tearing off the front of the engine as well. I mean, after all, scope creep is a real thing and if I'm good at anything, it's taking on more than I should. All right, let's talk about the plan of attack on this engine. We have uh, one thing in particular we're gonna work on on this episode, and then uh, a couple of other things that might take another episode or two will happen over the next few episodes. So, of course, the first thing we talked about doing is we need to take care of the valley pan that is under the intake. And to do that, we have to take off the fuel rail, a couple of electrical boxes, uh, a fair bit of wiring and things like that. And while I have that out, the other thing I'm going to be working on is uh, back behind there is a uh, heater control valve and auxiliary pump. And when I did some analysis off the engine using my INPA and some of the other software, it said that there was actually a code uh, on the auxiliary pump that it wasn't working. And so um, one of the things I need to do is take that out when I do this. And while I'm at it, I'll probably go ahead and rebuild the brushes on that. And then one of the heater control valves out, uh, we'll replace all the gaskets on that. Since it's gonna be out, it's easy to do. Uh, we'll go ahead and take care of that as well. And then the other thing I think we're gonna be working on is we're gonna go ahead and pull uh, everything off of the power steering system. So it leaks. Uh, I don't know how old the reservoir is. Um, so uh, I just I just know that it's leaking. One of the things I gotta take care of, of course, like I showed you is uh, all the leaks that this car currently has. Uh, we gotta stop as many of them <laughs> as we possibly can. Uh, I think we take care of the power steering, we take care of the coolant. That's gonna take care of two major ones. While I don't see an actual leak coming out right now, uh, I'd say there's really a, really a pretty good chance it's coming out of the back because that's a pretty common problem with these. So. Uh, I think first things first, we're gonna take off all the, the air intake stuff, and uh, then we'll start attacking the top of the engine and getting everything pulled off of it. So, so we'll get some tools. Actually, what I need to do first is I need to start the car, uh, pull the fuse for the fuel again so that I can get the fuel pressure out of the fuel rail. And then once that's all said, I actually have to disconnect the battery before I start messing with any of the electronics up here. Uh, that would be the smartest thing to do, which oftentimes I don't do. All right, the first one is a 10 millimeter bolt right here. We got a little bit of an extension. Then we have an eight millimeter here. We get this hose off the front. Then we have a couple of sixes. One on this clamp here, and we get another one over here on the throttle body. Oh, there's actually one more down there. I don't know if I have got a long enough extension for this right now. That looks like that worked. And then of course the math sensor. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of an audio error here, but we're just taking off the two vacuum lines on the back side of the air intake, and then we can take the whole air intake out finally. All right, next up, we need to take care of the fan. We need to get this fan off. Uh, and the easiest way to do it is to use tools like this. This is a uh, fan removal wrench. This is to hold the, uh, the pulley, and uh, this is to turn it. This one has a 36 and a 32 millimeter um, wrench on it. This one's 32, if I remember right. And I think we use the two smaller holes, I'm pretty sure. Fit directly onto there. And that's got a little bit of an offset, which makes it kind of handy. And then, uh, there we go. That loosened up and then it spins right off. And this will help us get a little bit more room down in here. And I think it'll also help us when we uh, drop it like it's hot. <laughs> nice. So it looks like the MAF sensor is pretty much, um, the, the casing on this thing is really brittle and toast. Um, I hope that when I take the electrical uh, box off here, this is going back into that box through this, through, um, this loom protection of some sort. Um, so hopefully we will get in there. But the other thing I noticed too, it might be a little hard to see right here, is this throttle body is really dirty. Uh, it's the electronic, I probably shouldn't be pushing on this, but I'll push on it a little bit. It's got a ton of carbon buildup on the inside. So I hadn't planned on actually taking the throttle body off, but I think I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, get the gaskets for it, pull the throttle body off, and then this thing is, is so dirty. It's really amazing uh, how crusty these things can get. Uh, but we'll go ahead and take the throttle body off, give this thing a really good cleaning inside now, but gotta be careful because it is electronic. Uh, and then so we'll see if we can actually get a little bit of the inside of the intake clean as well. Uh, probably a little too much. It's kind of hard to get back up in there. 
Uh, but we'll see what we can do. So let's go ahead and uh, get to taking off this upper rail, I suppose, and, and some of this other, uh, these other electronics and stuff. We start by removing the tiny bolt covers and the 10 millimeter bolts on the beauty covers so that we can get access to the coil packs and the spark plugs. Each coil pack has a little metal clip to hold it in place. Just pull that out and then lift the harness out and set it to the side. Then just copy and paste that eight times. Now don't forget to remove the ground. There's one on each side and then of course, drop the nut down into the spark plugs. Aha, look at this. One of the things I noticed, we're actually missing a bolt right here. So I'm gonna have to find a replacement for that. Shouldn't be too hard, I don't think. It probably costs like $45 from FCP Euro. Remove each of the five bolts holding on the fuel rail and the four posts for the engine cover. A lot of the vacuum lines in a 20 year old E38 are gonna be crusty and brittle. So my plan is to replace as many as I can throughout this process. One easy way to get them off of things like the EGR valve is to spray just a little bit of silicone at the end and then use a pick to kind of pull the hose off of the metal and let the silicone coat of seep in and break that seal. Now we just need to remove the vacuum canister and the control valve along with the rest of those vacuum lines, which we'll replace with new before we put them back on. Whoops. Ascension trying to save it. Got a clip back there, and I think that should be everything. Our boxes should be free with the exception of the clips on the back that we will need to get to. This should be free as well, maybe? Oh no, there's a couple of little clips in here. I gotta get them undone too. That's right, I just had to pull those out of the injectors and those injectors look pretty dirty this is gonna require a lot of cleaning that's for <laughs> sure jeez maintenance is a real thing cars really should be maintained sometimes all right get those injectors up right there there we go yeah but essentially the whole fuel rail is now free i just want to get it apart from these boxes and get these boxes out of the way so uh, we'll have to take the clips off the back, off the injectors, to be able to get those guys off of the rail. And then uh, we should be good to go. And then we'll take out all the coil packs and spark plugs, uh, because I am replacing those today as well. All right, I'm going to show you the key to what I think is getting these off here. Um, the problem is, it's going to be a little bit difficult to do this with the, the GoPro, but I'm going to try. So, uh, I'll, I'll do this in post, but what you'll be able to see right there is a clip that is going around that gray injector. And there's a clip on each of the injectors on each side. And the key is you need to get one side off of it so that you can reach under and pull the whole clip off. So I'm gonna see if I can do that here. Sorry, this is gonna be a little bit jiggly. This is my, uh, <laughs> the pick I manipulate a lot, so it's probably gonna break sometime soon. There we go. See that, I just got that off of there, like that. And now, I may have pointed the camera down a little too far, <laughs> but I got it sitting off like that and let's go around to the front side or to the, to the side of it and I'll show you what it looks like. And now from this side, you can see that clip right there. And all you gotta do is just get something behind it and you can just flick it off and it'll fall down in there. That's far enough actually. Uh, if you leave it hanging there, it's not, it's not a big deal. Uh, but if you do that to each of the four, then you can just grab this thing and just yank it right off the fuel rail and it works just fine, fine. I've seen a handful of videos where people just yank the harness box directly off the rail without removing the retainer clips, and it likely would work just fine here. It's just that I found some brittle pieces of plastic so far in this car. I mean, after all, it's 20 years old. 
and I'm a bit nervous about breaking a connector on the harness box and having to replace it, so I'm just gonna be careful. Why is there hair in here? <laughs> yeah, those injectors are pretty dirty, but uh, I'm glad I got new oil rings for them, so we'll be able to replace all the oil rings on the injectors before we put those back in. But sometimes you can do this from above. You just have to uh, be able to reach back behind it. And uh, like from this angle, I can actually see two and three, and three line. And I just gotta get my hook behind it. There was two. And there we go. That worked. Now two and three are done, I just gotta do four. And four is admittedly difficult to see on here. Um, and it is hard to reach. So you gotta kinda know exactly where it is. And even then, it's still pretty hard. There we go. Yeah, that, those back ones are really hard to get to, but once you get them, they come off pretty easily. Okay, there's four, three, two, one's already off, and it should just pull right off. One, two, three, four. There we go. Still got a couple things in here we gotta un got in the front of it to pull this off, but uh, we got all the clips out and the boxes are off the fuel rail. We should be get ready to get to the intake just about. Just got a few things I gotta pull off right here. There are 10, 11 millimeter bolts holding the intake down to the engine block and they're relatively tight. So I recommend breaking them loose by hand first, just so you have an idea of how much torque they're under and if any of them were loose beforehand. Then I use the powered bit of my wrench to take the nuts the rest of the way off and then on cue to drop the last one into no man's land where I can spend 10 minutes trying to fish it out with a magnet. After breaking the intake loose, just to make sure it's not stuck, I can then concentrate on disconnecting the lines from the crankcase vent valve on the back of the intake. I decided to cut the hose that goes to the brake booster just because it's a huge pain to get it off, and I had already ordered a new one, anticipating that I'd just cut it so I didn't have to deal with it. It was worth six bucks. I still have two bits to disconnect. First, under the intake is this vent pipe that goes from the oil separator to the CVV on the back of the intake. I have a new one, so this one can just go straight into the bin. Second, there's a breather tube that's still connected to the throttle body that decided to be a real pain to get off. Luckily, I have some hose pliers that have always proven to be very useful. I highly recommend you get some if you don't have any, and it made fast work of the stuck tube. So there we go. The intake is off. Man, look how dirty this thing is. Uh, even getting this the breather hose that was on the on this guy <laughs> it was terribly filthy. Like these are my hands. These are just you know, there's no gloves are on or anything. That's just how. Okay, I'm kidding. I do have gloves on. It's a little hard to see in here, but um, there's a ton of just grease and gunk on these guys here. Let me uh, bring over to here. And the other interesting thing that I'm finding, it might be a little hard to see uh, with the light, but there is oil uh, on each one of those intakes. So I think they've just been sucking oil in directly through the intake. Um, I think it's the backside of the, uh, actually, I don't even know how that would do that. I know the valve covers were leaking but they would have been leaking down on the front, which also is very, very dirty. But I'm curious as to why there's actual oil on the intake, or the intake gaskets are. And even the, the valley pan down here is just coated. It's a little hard to see what's going on back there. I need to get a better light back in there, but I do see some moisture back in there. So I have a feeling that uh, we are leaking coolant on the back. Uh, I'll get a little bit of better light in there and see if I can get a little better job with the camera. There we go. We got a little bit of a light out. You can see how much more uh, kind of gunky this thing is. You can see uh, a fair amount of, man, there's just like grease and gunk. So it looks like maybe we did get oil over this backside a little bit. I'm not sure how it would get out of the valve covers back into here, but it's clearly uh, pretty grody and greasy back in here. So we definitely are gonna have a lot of cleaning to do. It's a little bit hard to tell whether it's actually coolant or not, just because of how gross it is. <laughs> so we've got a lot of cleaning after we get a lot of this stuff off of here. So there you go, uh, it's pretty gunky. Not necessarily a huge surprise that it's that bad, but it's a little bit of a disappointment. It's that bad, but uh, yeah, I guess it's time to get a little more of this stuff off of here.
Next, we need to remove the accumulator, which I've also called the crossover pipe, and then the heater control valve and the auxiliary pump assembly and all the hard and flexible pipes associated with them so we can get the valley pan off. We'll start with the three pipes for the HCB, starting with the one at the accumulator and then the two going into the cabin to the heater. There are two power plugs on the HCV assembly. The one on the top is to the HCV, and then there's one on the bottom that's a lot harder to reach. That's for the auxiliary pump. Now let's get this thing out of here. Just gotta say it again, those pliers, super handy. One nice thing about the HCV assembly is that it isn't bolted in. It just sort of rests on a couple of rubber isolators. So you just have to give it a firm tug up to remove it and then rotate it around a bit to get it out. After it's most of the way out, you can just sort of rotate it around. You have access to that bottom plug that you can pull out and then just pull the whole thing out of the car. Next, we need to remove the knock sensors. I only have access to the one on the passenger side for right now because the driver's side is blocked by the coolant pipes. So we'll remove that one later. I didn't film removing the six bolts that hold the accumulator in because this is meant to be a family friendly channel and I used a lot of choice words. Besides, they're hard to reach and there was no way I was getting a camera back there so you could see it. So just trust me that I took them out and that it took a lot longer than I would have liked. Had to go right there. Finally, I have access to the driver's side knock sensors. Now with that out of the way, we can finally take out the belly pan and all 20 of its bolts. Alrighty, I feel pretty good about where we are in terms of disassembly in this episode. I think we've uh, gotten as far as we need to get for right now because I have decided that I am going to take the front of the engine off and we're going to do the timing chain guides and the, and the timing chains and um, the Vanos. And I had to order a couple other parts. I went, and went ahead and ordered the camshaft position sensors because we have one that is frayed. And so I had expected that that was going to take like two weeks to get here, but surprisingly I ordered it uh, two nights ago, I think, and it shipped today. So. It should be here like in three or four days. So there's not any sense in putting anything back into it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drain out the rest of the coolant that I can right here so that I can do a bunch of cleaning on here. Gotta get some solvents in there and things like that. I don't wanna get it into the, into the, uh, the coolant, even though I'm gonna do a complete flush on it later. Um, so I think I'm gonna just do that off camera. You guys don't need to see me do that. Um, but we still have a little more time left in this episode. So I think what I'm gonna do, I do, I'm gonna go ahead and take the heater core and the auxiliary pump. pump. And we're gonna disassemble that and refurbish it with uh, new parts. Uh, so we got new brushes for the auxiliary pump and we have new gaskets and seals for the heater core and uh, then that will be ready to go when we're ready for reassembly. So um, let's go to work. After making sure that the hoses and the assembly are drained of coolant, we just need to remove all the hoses.
Next, there are six T10 torque screws holding the heater control valve solenoids to the bracket that need to be removed, and then four more longer T10 screws holding the auxiliary pump in place. Use the screwdriver to remove the bracket holding the auxiliary pump. Pull it off and set it aside. Make sure and get the gasket out with the pump. Next, the solenoids and the plunger valves kind of stick to the bracket a little bit, so use a thin bladed screwdriver as kind of a wedge to break the corrosion and they should come off pretty easily. The resealing kit that I bought off Amazon has all the seals for the plungers and the solenoids as well as the new plungers and o-rings for the aux pump. Every one of these that I've taken apart has seals that have been pretty badly degraded. They're gonna be stuck to the parts and so it may take just a little bit of persuasion to get them off. There are little plastic sleeves that hold down the interior seals so that the plungers are guided and they can seat correctly. They are a bit of a pain to get out, but I found that if you try and gently break the seal with the bracket by taking a screwdriver and just twisting the blade slightly along the edges, it'll free them up well enough that you can pull them out with some pliers. Once the sleeves are out, you can remove the interior seals with a pick or a pair of pliers. They're gonna be in terrible shape and they may come apart. And that's it. We're fully disassembled and ready to start putting the heater control valves back together after cleaning them up a little bit. We start by putting the interior seals back in. Pay attention to the orientation from the ones that you took out. Once those are in, then you can put the sleeves back in. Just make sure that the holes are lined up in the right direction where the coolant won't flow. It helps that there are some indexing ribs on the sleeves to make sure they go back in correctly. Before we put the plungers back in, we need to replace the cones on the ends. I found it easiest to get like a thick set of pliers or something and then leave just enough room for a screwdriver to twist and break the cones loose. On some of them, you can just reuse them, but on mine, they were so badly corroded that the heads just snapped off the post. So might as well just replace them while you're in there. The surfaces of the plates had a bunch of residue on them from the old gaskets. And so I used a little bit of fine sandpaper and some razor blades to clean mine off before putting the new gaskets on. Then you can just reassemble all the new parts. Once the plungers are back in together, you can put it back into the bracket. The plates are indexed to the bracket, so you can only put them back one way, which makes it pretty easy. The solenoids are also indexed, and so they're easy to put back on as well. All right, I took a little bit of a break for a break here, and I went and found one of these that I got from Denver Beer and Oil that has another pump in it. And the reason that I did that is I had done a little bit of testing on this guy earlier. And let's put the ground on that side, which is the left side, the way that I'm holding it, and then put a little bit of power to the other side. And what you'll see on my uh, little power supply here, you got some weirdness going on there and it's not running. I'm not getting any sort of uh, running out of it, which makes sense that jives with the fact that I'm getting error codes in the car for my aux pump being bad. And so uh, I grabbed the one off of this one and watch what happens here. I don't know if you can hear it. So that one's running fine. So it looks like what we've got is exactly what I was expecting is this guy is bad.
Um, so I'm glad I uh, figured that out before I tore into it. Uh, but the other thing I might do just for just for grins is I might go ahead and tear into it and take a look at the brushes that are inside of this one. Uh, and I'm still gonna go take this one apart and look at the brushes in it as well. And uh, we'll, we'll do some comparisons and take a look at them. So the key is you have these little uh, metal pieces here that are kind of pushed in that keep you from taking the top off there. So all you really have to do is open those guys up a little bit. And uh, you need a pretty good little screwdriver to be able to get in there and twist them out. But overall, it's pretty easy to do. And since this one's so crowded, it might be a little bit more, uh, less willing to do it. Let's get the, uh, the persuader out here. I might, I might not do that on my, on the one that's gonna ultimately go in there, but, but I don't mind beating this one up a little bit because it's not working, so. All right, so here we have the two top parts of the, uh, the auxiliary pumps that have the brushes included, capacitors and whatnot that are on there, I'm assuming that those are. And um, yeah, we already pulled some of the springs back, we got the brushes out. And I thought it would be interesting to compare these two against one another. So I got out the digital calipers here that we can look at these. At the, and uh, the actual sections of these, let's just show the, the width and the, uh, the height of them. It should be five by five. 4.7 by 5.0. What if this one's the same? 4.8 by 5. Yeah, so more or less 5 by 5. And they're supposed to be 11 long, new, is my understanding. So if we look at this guy, it's uh, 5.6 meters, or 5.6 millimeters. So that's about, that's less than half, or about half. Not quite half its life, pretty close. Actually, barely more than that, considering you uh, only have so much room on there. And then that one's nine. That one's only actually used up about two millimeters in its life, and it's uh, quite a bit longer than this other one. So, uh, and the reality is, is that I pro I would feel relatively comfortable actually putting that one back in and, and utilizing that pump. And then these are some new ones I got off of eBay um, for eight. There's like ten dollars for eight of them, and these are. 5.8 millimeters wide by 4.7 tall, 4.8 tall. So they're identical in, the, in one direction. We have to take some off the other. And then uh, 13 millimeters long. So we'd have to take off, or 14, we'd take off three millimeters uh, to get that down to the right size and then a half a millimeter on other side. So we could go ahead and grind those down and replace these if we wanted to. Uh, I'm a little bit on the fence. Um, Part of the reason being, I think, is that as soon as I start getting into this and I start messing with those brushes, um, I, you know, I start changing the characteristics of it. And no matter what we do, these are not going to be the same original brushes. So, um, a little on the fence. I think what I might do is, uh, I have my old one here and I still have the spring from it. So I can put this one back together that came off of the other one that was actually working. Unlike the one that came out of my car that was a complete disaster. Uh, so what I might do is go ahead and grind these down and run all these on. Uh, and then put them into put them just to see if it works. Um, yeah, we will do that. That might be kind of cool. All right, we've got the main one back together. Now I haven't pushed these in yet, these tabs in yet, because I want to make sure this is working. I have my back one, backup one over here, back together. Uh, I'm not getting this one to run. I tested it first just to see if I could get it to run. Well, let's just test it again really quick. And I think um, because the brushes, these are the ones with the new brushes in them. Uh, and I ended up having to shorten these down to 10 and a half millimeters because 11 was too long. And uh, even then, boy, they barely fit. So I think five by five by 10 is the way to go on that. I think 11, oh, looks like that one's working. So maybe it is working. Listen to that one. All right, I guess we've got a backup. So that one has brand new brushes in it. Uh, I think I may use that one, we'll see. This one's a little quieter. Uh, and this has got, got old brushes in it, but these brushes were around eight and a half to nine millimeters. And uh, since I had to shorten these down to 10, the, 10, the fact of the matter is, is maybe they started it as 11. Uh, they were able to manufacture it with a hair better tolerances than I can putting this back together. Uh, but at nine or eight and a half to nine, uh, these still have plenty of life in them. These were down, uh, or in the old one that I had, they were down to um, about five and a half or six millimeters. So they. They were, they still had some life in them, uh, maybe another two or three millimeters before they would have gone. Um, but this, considering how things are going, is great. I can go ahead uh, and if I had this car for 10 more years, 
I doubt that these would actually wear down to the point that I need to replace them. And now that I have replaced them, replaced, I would actually just literally switch and swap switch these guys in and be taken care of because I have this one. So, um, but let's test this one real quick and make sure that it's working. Yep, it's working great. Uh, you can tell it's a lot more quiet. Uh, we'll even put, see if I can put the, uh, we'll put the mic down here next to it and see if you can hear it any better. So that's the quiet one. This is the one that's a little bit louder. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's surprised because it has uh, some new brushes in it. So awesome, this thing is working like a charm. It's in there, it isn't going anywhere. And uh, so uh, we also have the impeller here that we got here on. And there's a little bit of a tab right there that goes right into the proper hole, just like that. And it's metanic, so it goes right in. And then this guy, oh, we can't forget the, uh, the new O-ring that we need to put on here. All right, I ended up putting just the tiniest little bit of grease, just to make sure it's got a little something in there to see with. Doesn't need much. And we'll make sure this aligns like that. And I picked the four best screws I had out of these uh, these three options here. So uh, these are the best four. Um, but let's see here. We just have three more, I think, that we need to put on this side. One, two, and three. All right. I think we are snug down, make sure that's clipped in, and I think we are 100% back together. Maybe we'll do one more quick test on the uh, power here, just to make sure everything reacts like it's supposed to. Let's make sure it's on. Yep, we got, yep, we got. Left one's working. Right one's working. And then let's make sure that this one is working as well. Oh. All right, we are 100% back together. Heater core done, auxiliary pump done. Yes. All right, so there we go. That is it for today's episode, I think. Thank you all very much for joining me today. If you uh, are so inclined, please hit that subscribe button or at the very least, like the video, leave a comment down below. I would very much appreciate it. We gotta please the algorithm. It used to be you had to please people. Now you gotta please the algorithm. And that's the only thing that's gonna help my channel grow. So uh, by the way, thanks for 200 subscribers. We hit 200, let's keep this, uh, keep it going. Hey, we finally got done with the belly pan. We got it pulled out. We got the intake pulled off. Uh, we got all the other extra pieces. I went ahead and I got two of the fuel injectors taken out as well. I got a little test done. We'll talk about that in the next episode. Uh, also in the next episode, we are going to attack the intake manifold. We are going to clean the throttle body and we're gonna take off the CVV on the back of it. Uh, crankcase ventilation uh, doohickey on the back of the intake. And in the next episode, I'm gonna be giving you a little bit of a secret that when uh, other videos I've seen on YouTube get it wrong. And what that is, is there's a special tool you need to be able to get it to use to pull that uh, CVV off. And everybody uses a Torx bit and it strips it. Uh, there's actually a correct tool you should be using. And while I like the idea of uh, when you put the next one on to be using uh, hex head bolts, they're not the right bolts. You should be using the ones that came with it. Uh, so we'll show you the right one to use in the next episode. And then uh, the other good thing is, is that all the parts for the, uh, the timing chain guides are gonna be coming in in the next day or two. So uh, that'll be the other thing we do in the next episode is we're gonna get the front of the engine off, including the Jesus bolt. I have a particular way I'm gonna take care of that. We will get all the way down to the timing chain guides being pulled out in the next episode. And then the following episode, we'll start putting everything back in. So I uh, hope you guys will join me in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one very much. If you did, again, thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Either way, thanks very much. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye.